Welcome to Science at FMNH, a podcast and video series that explores the behind-the-scenes science collections and research at Chicago's Field Museum. We continue our discussion with Rick Ree by exploring how the shape of floral tubes influences the evolution of flowers. My name's uh, Rick Ree. I'm a, a curator in the botany department at the Field Museum. Another trait that is very conspicuously variable is the length of the flower tube. And that is actually a really interesting aspect of this story because normally in flowering plants we associate long floral tubes with very specialized pollination mechanisms in terms of highly covalved relationships with pollinators that have mouth parts that match the length of the floral tube. And in, in those cases, the pollinator is typically accessing nectar at the base of the flower as a reward for visiting the flower. Pedicularis is different and kind of uh, confounds all of those expectations because the species with the long tubes actually don't produce any nectar at all and the bumblebee visitors collect only pollen. So the pollen is their reward, and the pollen is held inside the galea, that upper lip of the flower. And so the, the bumblebee spends all of its time at the apex of the flower, and the length of the tube has no role in the reward. And so it's a great mystery, you know, why do so many species of Pedicularis have these long floral tubes? And it's a question that we still don't know the answer to, but there are some hypotheses such as the length of the tube means there's a greater distance that the pollen that's deposited has to grow. It has to grow a pollen tube down to fertilize the ovary at the base of the flower. So if, you, if you're a species that has a very long floral tube and a long style, it might be less likely that your ovary will be fertilized or will receive foreign pollen, pollen from another species, because pollen from another species may be unable to grow the length of that, that floral tube. <laughs> 